Hello. Continuing on with the layout we created in the last tutorial, this time I'll talk about routes and turnout operations. A route represents a rail path that is set and locked on behalf of an activation request. Set in the sense that some turnouts will have to be switched to a given state for the route's path to be valid and locked, meaning that while the route is activated, no other request conflicting with the route's configuration is allowed. So while in edit mode, I'll add a route object. I'll define my first route from this siding to this spur here. With the route selected, toggle in the elements of the route just as we did adding tracks to blocks in the previous tutorial. As before, we can use shortcuts for expediency. Now to set the proper turnout states. And the route is complete. For operational purposes, only the turnout tracks must be members of the route. However, you'll notice that I have included other non-turnout tracks as members of this route. These serve two purposes. One, they serve as hotspots for route selection. And second, they create a better visual representation of your route's path. Now I'll create my second route, this time from the switchboard. You can see each as I select them. They can also be selected from the switchboard with a left click as long as you are in Routes Edit mode. If a track is part of more than one route, a menu will appear from where you can pick which one you wish to select. You may have noticed these little circles on all turnouts. These are color indicators that are only meaningful in operation mode. These colors can be customized from the application's options screen. Here, here, and here. By default, orange means the turnout is set. Yellow means that the turnout is in a pending state, meaning that it's currently changing from one state to another. The turnout switch time is a property that can be set here to match the speed of your switch machine. For example, a tortoise switch machine usually takes about two and a half seconds to switch. So that would be 2,500 milliseconds. And finally, the red indicator represents a turnout that has been set and locked by a route. Now let's go to operation mode and see these in action. First I'm just going to flip this turnout. Right click on the turnout and set it. Notice how the circle turned yellow while the switch occurred and then turned back to orange. By the way, if a turnout is already in the proper position, it will not cycle through its yellow pending phase because it's already set. Now I'm going to set the route. Right click and you'll see each route has two options. Set only means that the turnout will be set but not locked. So another route or turnout command could override this route. Set and lock will additionally perform a lock so that the route must be unlocked before any other request can override the state of its turnouts. This can be seen by the red indicators. If I now try to change this turnout directly, 
you can see that this auction will be blocked because this resource is under the locked routes control. So we get this message. So I have to unlock the route first before we can operate the switch. Well, that wraps it up for this installment on routes. Thanks for listening.